So this video here is kind of a part two from the last one. Um, I put it all together and realized it's getting over an hour long, so decided to split it up. And um, so here's the uh, the other half with some other hardware that I was uh, less successful with. And now to get into some really weird territory. So this is a uh, voice over IP phone. It um, runs Android. Um, when I found it, it still had the little screen protector on it. Uh, so I thought maybe it had never even been used, but I got it home and fired it up and uh, asked for a password, which was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and I was greeted by a bunch of information about the phone calls of some senior something or other at some company. Uh, I got into the admin settings because I figured I'd do a factory reset. It wanted a password, which was admin. Um, and so I ended up factory resetting it, but it wants to like hook up to some sort of Microsoft Teams account or something. So anyway, cracked the thing open. Um, so on the back of this board, there's a little RF shield covering some stuff. I'm not sure what. Some of the documentation mentions Bluetooth, but it also mentions plugging a like a Bluetooth dongle in because it does have a uh, little USB-A plug there. Um, there's also like a Texas Instruments chip on the back. When I looked that up, that's for handling um, power over Ethernet, so it can take, you know, rather than use this little barrel jack here, it can take power off the Ethernet. Um, so the main CPU is here. It's a, uh, a Rock chip, uh, RK3128. Probably can't see that on the camera. Uh, this is memory chips here. We've got a Samsung uh, flash module. There's this thing here, which uh, handles uh, the LCD. Um, coming in from the top here is probably, that's the touch screen sensor, and it's probably I squared C there. Um, there's also some real tech chips in here, and one of those is a Ethernet switch. So, um, you know, that's why there's two plugs on here. It's supposed to like uh, one plugs into the computer you'd be using, and the other goes out to your uh, company's network. Um, there's like a little sensor of some sort here for the uh, phone hook, and then uh, the front number keys and stuff here come in on this, which I'm guessing is using GPIO, because it seems like an awful lot of wires to be some sort of, uh, like an internal USB of any sort. Um, but yeah, so the whole thing here, this is a, a quad core, a 32-bit ARM chip. It's got Ethernet, a switch. Um, the switch probably um, likely does a VLAN tagging, so you could um, set a priority for uh, voice over IP stuff. Um, there's a little microphone on the side, a big speaker here for your speakerphone. Um, it takes two um, you know, phone cords, uh, one's for the headset that comes with it, and then uh, the documentation says you could plug like another like, you know, clip onto your head headset sort of thing too. Um, and yeah, along with, you know, a little touch screen here, a USB port and a power over Ethernet. So uh, when I dug in looking for a UART, it turned out to be, um, might not show up on here, but there's three right there, three little through holes. Um, and that'll be like ground, receive, and transmit. So uh, let's go ahead and try to get into the boot console. All right, let's uh, power it up. So if I go ahead and let it go, um, it'll start booting um, Android, which uh, doesn't really output anything. Um, one thing to note here is this uh, scan key equals. Um, that'll actually change if you press different keys on the front. So let's power it off and turn it back on. So at startup, if I spam the escape key, I can get to a U-boot prompt. Um, so let's see, what do we have here so far? Not a whole lot of information comes up. Um, says it's U-boot. 
Now the interesting thing is, is obviously it responded to the escape key. Um, I can press the enter key and it'll give me another prompt, but if I press anything else, I get nothing. And the interesting thing is if I enter, there's a weird little lag there. Um, so what I'm guessing is, is that this is actually asking for a password. Uh, looks like a U-boot prompt. Um, but yeah, matter of fact, if I hold down some key, like I'll just hold down the zero key and just let it fill up. Like if I want to do some sort of, you know, buffer overflow. Um, uh, enter, still nothing. Um, so yeah, one of the more interesting things I've seen as far as like a, a secured U-boot. Um, doesn't ask like it's, you know, it's not explicitly asking for a password, but it's acting like um, some sort of password is going in there. So um, unless I can dig into the flash and dig that out, um, this will take a bit to actually get running. But sort of an inter interesting piece of equipment here. Um, one of the things I can do is I found that if I hold down the speakerphone button, so hold that down and power it up, So you can see it says scan key equals 40. Um, I can actually switch back here to the uh, little webcam. And I don't know if that'll show up on the screen, but it says one for TFTP and two for USB. Um, so I can press different things to um, basically reflash it over USB or over the uh, network. But uh, that seems to be the only other thing it does. Um, so I'll go ahead and yank the power again. Hit escape and yeah. So I can stop the boot but I can't really get to do anything else. But and kind of an interesting piece of kit though. And now on to the next one. And if this is one of those uh, iceberg charts, we'd be getting near the bottom now. Um, so I have a couple Goodwill outlet stores near me. Um, if you're not familiar with Goodwill, they um, take stuff as donations and sell it as kind of a charity. Um, and some of those stores like have shelves and items on the shelves with price tags and all that. Um, and that's where I get like a lot of my, uh, uh, my computer monitors. Cause you, if you know how to look at a, you know, read a, um, a serial number, um, you can find like Dell IPS monitors, like 1080p ones for like 20 bucks. They're super cheap there. Um, anyway, uh, the outlet store is a whole nother thing. It is, uh, tends to be just this big open room with big bins on wheels and just junk just in the bins and you dig through it and you buy the stuff by weight and since nobody wants e-waste um, electronics are 79 cents a pound um, so most of these things I've shown so far came from there um, they cost me like a dollar each and half the weight are the little you know wall warp power plug things that come with them um, but if you go to like a regular Goodwill, you can find like, you know, decent monitors and some of these Wi-Fi routers you'll find there and they're like five or ten bucks. Um, but this thing, um, this is a hub for an Xfinity um, security system. So which is also known as a Comcast cable. Um, and it is one of the most over-engineered pieces of electronics I've come across in a while. Um, it's got this nice little kickstand on the back. Um, it has a you know touch screen on the front. Looks like a camera, some speakers, which means there's probably a microphone inside. Um, has a power jack, RJ45. Has this little kickstand which comes off, and it's held in with screws, and they're not like you know typical sort of screws. Um, that look like wood screws, these big gnarly threads on them to like just dig into the plastic. They're actually like little 
really fine machine screws. Um, it probably doesn't show up on camera, but and inside here, I'll just pull this off. Are you can kind of see some of them are brass inserts for the screws to thread into, like set into the plastic. It's all uh, like ABS plastic here. Um, yeah, I got it home. I took this off. Uh, behind that was a little cover, and in there was a battery backup. So we got a 4,400 milliamp hour um, lithium polymer battery pack. Um, this little thing was uh, held a SIM card, and all the other screws holding down the back were security torques. So if you've ever seen like a regular Torx, it's those star-shaped ones. Again, probably can't see it on camera. But a security Torx has a little tiny bump in the center, so you can't put a regular Torx in there. you got to go buy security Torx wrenches. Um, if you ever mess around with all these things, you should just have a set of them around. They don't cost all that much. So they're just annoying more than anything else. Um, inside, everything is held down with security Torx. Um, so I have pulled this whole thing apart. Everything is covered. You can kind of see them a little bit in there. Everything is covered with RF shields. Um, no clue just by looking at it what's in there. Other than this one here, which uh, says it's a Huawei chip of some sort. Went and looked up the part number. It's a 3G cell phone antenna. So that went with this SIM card and this battery backup. Um, according to the documentation, you could, you know, call, hit this red button here. And even if the power was out and, um, you know, you had your internet was cut or whatever, uh, it could still use the cell phone to dial 911. Uh, there's a big sort of buzzer on the back along with actually stereo speakers. Um, here's a little uh, a little LED up here, I think, or the, that might be the microphone. I think that's the microphone, actually. There's a little you know, a little tiny hole in the top of this plastic case. Anyway, just ridiculous. Every, every screw goes into a brass insert. Nothing is just, like, screwed into plastic. Everything's a security torx. Everything's covered in RF shields. And there is one, two three antennas. So this thing has at least a cell phone antenna, probably Wi-Fi of some sort, and uh, looking up some stuff on this, um, it turns out uh, Xfinity used Zigbee for a lot of their security sensors, so there's a, a Zigbee radio in here too. Um, on the side there's USB-A, uh, SD card slot, and a headphone jack. There's some other buttons on the side which uh, correspond to like, kind of like your typical sort of cell phone, like a power button and then like a volume rocker. Um, but yeah, just, you know, I tried peeling up one of the, the RF shields because when I first powered it up, that one seemed to get warm first. So I was like, well, maybe the CPU is under there. But um, instead, I was like, couldn't get that up. So I was like, well, I'll try looking for a UART. And it turned out to be four small through holes down here. So there's also some pads up here which correspond to some holes inside the board so that might be another like a JTAG or something else to you know initially flash the um, the device with the factory but uh, anyway so I did find a um, UART so let's try and get into that alright let's uh, stick a power cord in And there we go, running some old version of U-Boot. And there it goes, goes jumps right into Linux. Um, initializing some stuff there. Oh, it says, uh, yeah, Bluetooth. Doesn't necessarily mean it has it, but it is loading a driver for it. Um, MMC, so it's checking, you know, flash storage of some sort. Um, There you go. And local host login. So an interesting thing about this one, at least if I let it go, you know, into Linux and I want to play with that, is um, it'll just automatically reject anything that isn't actually a an account on it. So if I type in admin, um, it'll just say nope, there's no admin. 
But if I type root, it'll ask for a password. And I've tried a lot of the standard things, you know, various number combinations and stuff. Um, nothing seems to work. Um, so again, this would be one of those ones where you'd have to actually dig into the flash and decrypt it all and try to find um, where the password is stored. Um, so let's, uh, let's try rebooting it. So power off, power back on. Um, this one, you spam the escape key and that stops it from booting, but right away it just says enter security code. Um, and you know, a lot of the usual suspects don't work. Um, so again, this one's actually explicitly password protected. Um, but it does let, just, uh, let you know what this is. So we got a uh, free scale um, i.mx51, uh, 800 megahertz. So I looked this up, this is an older um, uh, ARM processor, a 32 bit thing, single core, 800 megahertz, meant for, you know, industrial sort of uses. Um, they have a few different versions of it. Um, one of them does come with a, a rudimentary graphics processor that'll do 3D, which I'm guessing this probably has because um, it actually has quite a nice little display on it when it comes up and starts uh, doing stuff on the screen. Um, but yeah, when I looked into what sort of things you could do for this, uh, most of the almost all the talk was about using a technician's code to get into the built-in software so that you could add your own cameras and stuff. Um, evidently, Xfinity didn't want you doing this. They wanted you to pay to have some technician come out and do it. And looking at this thing, I'm guessing it's because it is quite the uh, the loss leader. This is not a cheap piece of equipment, just with how over-engineered it is. Um, so my guess is, is that they sold this at a loss and hope to make it up by making uh, you know forcing customers to go through them to add any additional items to it because I'm sure things like IP cameras and door sensors and stuff were not um, expensive items but they probably had to pay because you couldn't hook one up yourself you had to hack the device so not a whole lot of stuff I could find on how to get into Yubu though or uh, flash anything else on these it was mostly about you know how could I you know, keep my Xfinity security system, but hook up my own cameras. But yeah, definitely over engineering. So we're talking, we've got a LCD touchscreen, um, Ethernet jack, Wi Fi, cell phone, Zigbee, um, speakers, stereo speakers, a buzzer, a microphone, USB, SD card reader, um, you know the whole nine yards and yeah everything you know including just the, the little kickstand has to be held in with brass inserts um, and machine screws so it's um, definitely an interesting interesting piece of equipment